This is Brent Mike it's Motorsports and uh, we are continuing assembly on our 311 small block Ford. I did get our bearings drilled so that'll fit in our uh, dowelled caps for our aluminum rods. And um, I get some rings clean, cleaned up and we'll begin to assemble the short block. All right, I uh, guess I uh, <clears throat> spared you of the monotony of putting pistons and rods in, but uh, here's the end result. We've got all eight in and moving. Um, we'll go through and torque all of our rod bolts now. Um, r and &R wants you to go in three steps to a final total of 65 pound-feet. These are ARP 2,000 bolts, 3 8 diameter. And uh, we'll do that. And then uh, I'll get the engine turned over back right side up and we'll check the deck height on all eight pistons. Um, I did it on a couple already, but uh, we wanna go, uh, yeah, I'll learn to speak English here in a second. We wanna do it on all eight so that we can make sure that uh, we don't have any uh, big discrepancies in um, how far the piston is in the hole. All right, so we got uh, everything torqued down. And uh, let me see if I can get this turned over without making the camera look stupid. But uh, all the pistons were down about an average of nine or ten thousandths. So we are good to go there. Uh, next step is to put this uh, oil pump on. This is a Melling Select. And the nice thing about the Melling Select is it's got a screw-in plug here so that you can change release springs. It comes with this spring standard. I like using the purple spring. That gives me about 80 pounds of oil pressure uh, on these higher RPMs in higher RPM engines. So we'll get that swapped out. All right, so I got the relief spring swapped out. Uh, this is a new uh, pump drive. And if you're not familiar with Ford pump drives, they put this uh, uh, tooth washer on the end. Um, that end goes up so that when you pull the distributor out of the block it doesn't suck the oil pump drive up with it so um, we're going to get our <clears throat> our oil pump on um I, I well everybody has their own way of doing things uh, we're going to end up with some some arp uh oil pump and pickup fasteners but what I like to do is start off with some studs just to keep everything located. That way I can slide my pump on with the old pump drive in and get it lined up and positioned. And then I can change um, the stud out one at a time, put Loctite on my bolt and cinch it down. Okay, so we're moving right along. Got our Mylodon oil pump pickup bolted on. Um, I did have to elongate the notch for this to slide down easily. We got Loctite on that nut and obviously Loctite on our pickup nuts um, or bolts. I just checked the pan to pick up clearance and we have uh, 3 16 to a quarter inch which is in the right spot. Got a one piece uh, oil pan gasket so I want to put just a little bit of silicone in the uh, in the joints here, and um, for the most part, these gaskets do their do their work uh, without much trouble. And um, again, this is what I like to usually say that before the pan goes on, this is your last chance to um, go over everything. So all the main caps are facing. Uh, the right way you got lubricant on your oil or on, on your timing cover um, Main caps have been checked rod bolts have been checked um, Oil pump oil pickup everything has been checked. So uh, Once the pan goes on it's a pain in the hind end to pull it back apart. So we're in good shape I'm gonna uh, wash the oil pan and then we're gonna get it on all right, our Mylodon pan is bolted on. This is a rear sump pan with a little front sump kick out for a Fox Body Mustang. And what I'm doing now is I'm going through, these are BAM uh, pressure fed needle bearing lifters. 
lubing these up and what I'm doing is not getting any oil um, in the push rod seat because um, this is a Friday night. Tomorrow when I get up and fill the engine with oil, I'm gonna prime the pump. And if I don't get any oil coming out of there, then I'm gonna have to do a little modification between these two holes right here. All right, so <laughs> I didn't do what I said I was gonna do. I got a little bit messy, so I have to get those and cleaned up a little bit. But for the most part, uh, lifters are in. And the reason I'm doing this without the heads on is because once the heads go on, the lifters cannot come back out on uh, a short deck Windsor. So uh, anything that has to do with oiling, you have to figure it out before the heads go on. So we will wait till tomorrow and see what happens. All right, it is now Saturday morning and um, Engine is set overnight. I'm going to do a, one quick snug on the oil pan bolts, and then we're going to fill the engine full of uh, some Gibbs uh, 5W30 break-in oil, and we're going to get this oil pump primed. I'm also going to take a chance or take the time to uh, plug in my oil uh, pressure gauge and make sure that our pump is putting out uh, what it should. Stand pipes are working pretty good. Alright, so we got our gauge hooked up, we got our priming tool in the engine, um, we got this gauge right here so you can see what we get, and uh, I'm watching for oil flow out of the lifters, we're going to see what we get here. We're getting about 75 pounds of oil pressure. Um, 75, 80 was kind of what I was expecting. This is pretty, uh, not as thick oil as I normally would run, but um, that's why I think the pressure is a little bit low. Uh, we're not getting a substantial amount of oil out of the lifters. Um, I think what we are getting is what you are seeing um, coming down the lifter gallery. So take a look at this. So if you remember, um, underneath the crossover, I have a, um, about an 80 thousandths restrictor. So it's just a tremendous amount of oil coming out of that size orifice. Um, a lot more than what you would think, but at the same time, I'm not getting a tremendous amount of oil um, out of the lifter cup. So. I'm going to do a little modification to um, one of the pairs and see if it helps. And if it helps, I'm going to uh, do it on, on all eight pairs. All right, so let me show you what the modification was. And sometimes you have to do this. Some engine families are worse than the other. For, let me get a towel real quick here. wipe these off all right so if you see this uh, feed hole 
this is how uh, the oil, the liquor passes oil. Um, sometimes when you don't get a lot of oil to the push rod, and um, it so this varies on application. But in this situation, I want um, I want a, a decent amount of oil to the top end because it is going to be a higher RPM engine with a lot of spring pressure, and I want to keep the springs cool. Um, so there's a little modification that you can do and um, it just takes a second and it involves taking just a let me see if I can get on camera here taking a Dremel and just making a very small mark to connect these two bands and look and see now what the difference is in, in oil coming out of the lippers. So that will pass a lot more oil to, through the push rod. And, you know, I plan on having some pretty thick wall push rods, which will be restricting push rods. Um, so what I get out of here, uh, I w what I'm trying to say is I'd rather have a lot of flow here. And if I have to, I can restrict it in the push rod. <laughs> Um, than being in a situation where the lifters do not pass oil and I have to pull the heads off and all that stuff. So I'm going to take just a quick second and redo all of these and then we'll be good to go. All right, that literally took no more than about two minutes and uh, we've got a, a lot more oil coming out of uh, the lifters going into the push rods. And um, now we can focus on getting the heads on. So. Uh, everything under here is is buttoned up and uh, we're good to go okay i'm gonna back up a little bit uh i still need to get the harmonic balancer on and before you get the heads on it's it's an easier time to do that than after the heads are on um just because you want to check and verify uh that top dead center is correct with your pointer and i have an adjustable pointer so i'll want to set that but it's a whole lot easier to do it with a deck bridge than to use a, um, a piston stop and a spark plug hole. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that balancer on. Okay, so for the balancer, I went to power bond. This is an SFI uh, zero balance piece. And um, uh, my advice is to use a harmonic balancer installer. Uh, sometimes if the, the fit is correct, you can just pull it on with a uh, balancer bolt. I do not have an ARP balancer bolt because ARP is out of stock. So I have a factory one um, So I'm just going to use my install tool but uh, it's a lot easier with the Ford stuff because The balancer bolt is uh, 5 8 so it's a big honking bolt and it would pretty much pull it on if you wanted it to Not like the little delicate small block Chevy bolts All right, our balancer is installed um, I had to use an old stock balancer bolt, which I hate, but that's all I got right now. Uh, this is an ATI adjustable pointer. I did have to put a washer in between these spacers and the mounting bracket because the bolts were just a little bit too long. It wouldn't tighten up. But I've got it set with my deck bridge at zero. And uh, I'm just going to go one step further just to double check myself and use my um, piston stop that bolts to the head or bolts to the block. And we'll check it that way too. Piston stop on, checked it. Um, so basically what you do there is you set your your uh, stop a little bit down. Um, just past where the piston would be at top dead center. So you just want to catch it both sides of top dead center. And when I was rotated it one way, I was at like um, 8 and... I have almost nine degrees, same deal here. So we are double checked on that. Uh, that just makes me, uh, makes me be able to, to trust um, the timing on the dyno and know that, you know, 32 degrees is 32 degrees. All right, so who's ready to put the heads on? Here's an interesting thing. I always check these with my engines, but we got um, about 120 inch pounds breakaway in between around 80 or 90 inch pounds on 
continuous rotating torque. So this engine needs about eight pound-feet of torque to turn over the rotating assembly. Excellent. Okay, head gaskets are on on a Ford. It is very important. Front goes to the front because you have these water holes in the back. Um, this is a uh, four 100 bore 39,000 stick gasket. Um, so <laughs> if we're going to have our minds on learning something from this dyno session, then we're really going to learn something um, about uh, what we can get away with as far as um, piston valve clearance and that sort of thing. Um, but uh, another thing on these five liter blocks, the top head bolt holes do not hit water. The bottom ones do. So make sure you put thread sealant on those bottom holes. We now have head on motor. Uh, another thing to keep in mind is uh, these um, smaller blocks have smaller holes in the deck for head bolts. Um, so you have to use these little stepped washers that are available from different manufacturers because the heads are made for uh, any small block Ford. So uh, 351 Windsor or, or whatever you choose to bolt them on. And you need to adapt the size of the hole in the head to the size of the fastener that you use. So you ditch the ARP washers and use these stepped um, washers that sit down in the head. Um, next thing we can do, uh, we can mount our Jessel subplates and uh, in the intake ports um, the bolt well, so if this was a rocker stud motor we would coat the rocker studs with thread sealant that go down into the intake ports because can you see where are you you can see that hole right there goes up into here so you don't want any oil getting into your intake port. So with these Jessel bars, the same thing. The bolts that hold the bar down to the head, the ones that go into the intake ports get thread sealant. And then we torque those. Starting to look like an engine now. Uh, just have the rockers laid on here so I can throw some boxes away. I've got a um, mock-up push rod coming from Smith Brothers. So I can check, uh, it's a 7 16 diameter, and uh, it's the length that uh, I've measured. So I'm gonna check clearance before I order 16 push rods. Uh, those push rods are very expensive in the 7 16 So uh, my cost is $400 a set. So I wanna make sure that um, I get the right length. Uh, so we are at this point starting to look like a nice little engine and uh, heads are torqued. What I can do now is um, set my intake manifold on and see what we can do or what we need to do to get the ports aligned. Hopefully everything lines up uh, with the gasket and the intake will not need cut. So the weapon of choice for the intake manifold is this um, Victor Jr. Uh, it's actually made for Ford Racing, so it has a Ford Racing part number, but it's a Victor Jr. intake made by Edelbrock. It's been ported by Joe Crane. Average flow is uh, about 366. Some of these are touching 370. <laughs> nice looking intake manifold. So we're going to get that set up on our long block and see what the ports look like. All right, so this is how we're looking uh, with the gaskets on. Uh, ports line up really good, so the intake will not need cut. Just need to give it a bath, but I'm gonna leave it off at this time. Um, just because when the push rods come in, I wanna be able to shine a light uh, from the Lifter Valley area so I can see how much room I have around my push rods. All right, this is about as far as I can go today. I've got my valve cover sitting on just to cover the, uh, the heads up. 
really nice because even without a gasket, they sit down against the head over those shaft rockers. Um, waiting on my distributor to be delivered and uh, electric water pump. And of course, we'll need to get some push rods in. But uh, this is what it's looking to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this one up. I've got something else special that I'd like to show you this weekend. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this video up. But uh, as always, thank you for watching. And uh, please uh, let all your friends know about the channel. Let's hit that subscribe button. And I uh, got a lot more stuff coming down the road. Y'all have a good weekend.